Welcome back, everybody. We just did Lancelot Moore's um, quarant about marrying his cousin, Barbara, who was only 14, which, oh my god, no. No, no, no. That's so messed up. So we'll keep going on with it. Hear ye, hear ye. Spanish Armada nears English coast. Mason prepares for invasion whilst Queen searches for missing navy. Hear ye. The Spanish ships near our shores, the Queen's ground troops prepare for what promises to be a blood soaked slaughter of Englishmen by continental Catholic savages. England's coast is undefended. Experts predict Spanish ships will be sailing up to times of two London one days. Sources in the royal court say the Queen is more than a little vexed by the absence of the royal lady, which experts described as lost. Well, I know exactly what happened. Those two fucking explorers looking for the gold went and stole them, so it's on their heads, not mine. I like that. She's a nosy la la. Blessed even, Dr. Foreman. Mistress Payne, what brings you in such weather? It is most dangerous to be about in it. Oh, it takes more than a little wind and rain to forestall me from doing the Lord's work. Besides, foul weather is naught but God's righteous vengeance upon London for the sinful debauchery of its inhabitants. Verily? Then I dread to think what northerners get up to of an evening. Pray heed me carefully, Dr. Foreman, for tis on a most pressing matter that I am come. Doctors, you have heard the news. The Spanish Armada does sail once again towards England's shores. It seems this latest Armada was most unexpected. Well, as tis off said, no one expects the Spanish Armada. Tis very <laughs> grave this time, for I have heard tell that our own warships are far away at sea, and with our coasts undefended, a Catholic horde may soon be sailing up the Thames to slay us all. Aye, our situation is most grave indeed. But what would you have me tell you, Mistress Payne? I wish to know whether the English fleet will arrive home in time to defend our shores. Or might we ordinary folk be compelled to take up arms to defend ourselves? Dr. Foreman, are you ready to beat off the Catholics, come what may? Am I ready to beat off the... Uh, oh, well... Madam, let us pray the need never arises. Uh, Perchance the stars will offer us some reassurance. Will the Royal Naval Fleet return home in time to defend England from the Spanish Armada? Let's beat off those Catholics. <laughs> Alright, what do we got? The Royal Navy is absent due to a reckless and scattered pursuit of gold. Ambitions will be thrown by confusion. Unpleasantness will result from cunning plan to steal goods. I'm pretty sure it's A. Always cannot be trusted to uphold the duties to defend ordinary Englanders. Mistress Payne removes her neighbors to take up arms. The Spanish people will be led to the illness of their sailors. Catholic ill angels have plans. Thor by deadly. It's A. Madam, know you of Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, or of Sir Walter Raleigh, perchance? Oh, young Lord Devereux, such a talented young man. My niece is especially taken with him. Well, it would seem the pair did take the royal fleet on an expedition to intercept and seize gold being transported back to Spain from the New World. But their plan went awry, and now they are lost at sea. I am afeard that, short of a miracle, the Spanish invasion is indeed imminent. Her Majesty would risk her realm and the lives of her subjects for the sake of gold. Then our present danger does not surprise me. England's downfall will be God's punishment for our Queen's greed and avarice. Well, to be fair to Her Majesty, I do not imagine she gave Devereux and Raleigh permission to... Oh, my days! With a Spanish invasion nigh, 
I know not how to calm my anxious passions. He thinks I shall take to bed with Paul and Matthew this evening. Oh. Oh, yes, I see. The book of Paul and the book of Matthew. I have No. Uh, Holy Scripture does give great comfort to a distressed mind. Uh, God keep you well, Mistress Payne. That's not what she meant whatsoever. Perfect. Oh, look, mail. Sir, I must congratulate you on your stirring counsel you give me in relation to my horrid cousin Barbara, whom my parents did wish me to marry. As she did protect the wretched little fiend, did a length contrive a method for ending our engagement. She has run off with Earl of Shrewsbury. All oh, I was right. They cut up your humors and cause cancer to the soul. Doubt is that causes your gold disease. About peas. Well, let's go, Mug. Tomorrow, right, Mr. Mug. Back again so soon. And yet your red spots do seem to have faded. Aye, those spots were not but the work of fleas, just as you said. My wife did beat the rugs and banish the dogs from the house. She'll be beating and banishing me next if she has her way. Well, I am glad to hear you are faring better. Uh, what brings you this day? I have a humoral imbalance and need treating for it. A humoral imbalance, you say? Well, it is true that an imbalance of humours can affect a man's mood. For instance, an excess of black bile, which is a cold, dry humour, can provoke feelings of melancholy, whereas yellow bile is... is hot and dry. I thank you for the explanation, Dr. Foreman, but I did learn all about humours when I took supper with my friend, Mistress Ollingworth. She has a humoral imbalance and takes medicine for it. Hence, I am come this day for medicine to treat my own imbalance. I see. And what mental symptoms are you experiencing? Any unusual or troubling feelings? Why, very troubling. Why, I find myself a fretting and a pacing all the day long. Even my wife has remarked upon it. Anxiety and agitation. Uh, pray tell, did these feelings begin before or after you spoke with your friend, Mistress Ollingworth? Hmm. Let me see now. After me thinks... I, after. It's Why? all Does that matter? in your yes, head. Quite possibly. Uh, but let us see what these stars do have to say. It's all in your oh, head. Humoral imbalance does ail my querent, Nicholas Mug. You have nothing wrong with you. It's all in your head, you dumbass. Humoral really imbalance of coronal communication. You know. Uh. I think it's that one. Yeah, it's this one. Just click. Have you a diagnosis yet? This day I am to dine with Mistress Ollingworth. And I wish to tell her all about it. Aye, it is done. Uh, you have an imbalance of phlegm in your bowels. Not only does this cause constipation, it does also provoke a condition of the mind called retention of the anus. Uh, with retention of the anus, <laughs> the sufferer is prone to fixation and obsession. Is there, perchance, a particular subject upon which you think you may fixate or obsess? Uh, pretty, sir, take your time to think. Hmm. Nay, nay, I cannot say as I do fixate or obsess over anything. He thinks your diagnosis must be wrong. Oh, well, it was worth a try. Aye, well, doubtless no. you have better luck with the stars next time, eh? Good day, Dr. Foreman. You dumbass. I'm going to get a letter. Hear ye, hear ye. Spanish Armada sunk by English storm. Hear ye. Proving once again that God loves England more than our Catholic enemies. The Spanish naval fleet has been defeated by a mighty storm and have been reaching the English Channel for nigh on three days. Remains in the Armada has fled back to Spain. Beachcombers are advised to wait for the storm to abate before looting corpses that have washed ashore. Well, guess what? God expected the Spanish Armada, so.
Oh, Sirrah, I, I have dire need of your counsel. Pray calm yourself, sir, and tell me of this urgent affair. Oh, verily, it is most urgent. A fair maiden has my heart. A maid with hair of shining gold and eyes so blue, the finest sapphires grow pale with envy. But she is the most pious and demure in nature, and has many other suitors. How might I win her favour? Golden hair? Uh, but in our last consultation... Oh, let me see here in my notes. Ah, yes. Uh, you told me your heart belonged to... A maid with hair of onyx black that doth make the finest ebony go grey with envy. You mean my cousin Marion? <sighs> Pish! That was naught but a childish fancy. I bid you, foreman, pray focus on the matter at hand. For if you do not help me win my true love's favour... My bursting heart will tear asunder. Oh my, my God. soul will wither unto. Aye, aye, as you will. Let us see what guidance can be had from the stars. How may Lancelot Moore win the heart of this golden haired maiden? By not falling in love with his cousins. Some religious conversion is strongly advised. Moore's hopes were realized, but he must be self disciplined and patient. Made secret nature is hidden beneath a veil of false religious fever. It'll appear more that it'll appear that Moore has a brutish nature. Moore may win the lady's hand in marriage with jewelry and fine things. He may tell that has a decent business partner. Or should lie about the size of his fortune. Uh, I think it's this one. It would seem the lady is a modest and pious maid. The stars urge you to exercise patience and restraint. Although your rivals be fierce, your sword must remain in its sheath, if you take my meaning. Huh? Keep my sword sheathed? Oh! oh <laughs> you think I do verily use my sword to fight with? Oh, ye gods, no! The sword I wear is purely ornamental. It's not what he if meant. If you paid more attention to the current fashion, you would know that, foreman. But that is not what I... Oh, never mind. What I mean to say is that your attack on the maid's heart must be spiritual. Have you considered converting to Puritanism? Only temporarily, of course. God's teeth! The heavens advise me to become a Puritan? Oh, in truth, this is ill to hear, for black is not a becoming colour on my person. Still, the stars do speak truth about my love, for she does oft prattle on about sin and hellfire. Good day to you, foreman. I must go at once to my tailor to be fitted for the latest and most loathsome Puritan fashions. Well, it wasn't added, so let's hope that's actually true. All right, Alice, what are you going to say to me? Hey, Mistress Black, what brings you? Oh, Dr. Foreman, I have worked myself into such a state that I have urgent need of you. Oh, uh, you have, have you? Oh, uh, well then, let me just, uh... Yea, I have urgent need of your counsel. I am certain that my husband, Blarg, is hiding a shameful secret from me. As you doubtless did note from my flushedness of face and heaving of bosom, I burn with the fever of suspicion and curiosity. Indeed, I did remark a fever upon your person, and I wish fervently that I may bring it to a speedy resolution. <sighs> Let us see. What is this secret that your husband, Thomas Blagg, hides from you? Mm. Pierce that Alice's inherent wealth one day serves his wife and family well through his room and their affairs. See intelligence of the right, yes, fairly. I was impressed by my thought. No, it's not. No, 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 not me. Really, just a woman. No, it's this. Cease your agitations and tribulations, dear woman. 
you doubt your husband wrongfully, for he is a paragon of discipline and virtue, and hides no secret shame. Uh, be glad, for Thomas Blagg's careful management of the family finances will one day make you a wealthy widow. And now, while we're on the uh, topic of shameful secrets, perchance we may... Sir, by my honour, it is excellent while my suspicions are unfounded. <laughs> I will now hasten to the thirsty fish to fate this wondrous news. I figured her second husband was going to die. Good day, Mistress Delamere. Good day, Dr. Foreman. It is Lady Dyer now. I remarried after poor Mr. Delamere passed. Verily? Oh, I am full sorry to hear of your husband's demise, my lady. It was his weak heart, as you did warn me. John collapsed and died, but a mask wore for someone, we know not whom, came to the ball dressed as a, a monstrous spider. Oh, my spider. God. Poor Mr. Delamere. He was always so afraid of spiders. <laughs> oh, what a ghastly business. You must have been most distressed. Yes, I was. So I hope you will understand why I worry for the health of my new husband, Lord Dyer. They had this not at all. And yet... And yet you would wish to know so that you may rest easier. Why, right? of course, my lady. Uh, pray, describe Lord Dyer's troubles to me, no matter how trifling they may seem to you. Well, I have noted that my husband awakens many times in the night to make water. Maybe no. that is the reason why he tires so easily during the day. And he does often complain of thirst and hunger, even after meals. Frequent urination, tiredness, dog-like appetite, and thirst. Uh, be there anything else? There is also a small wound on his hand. It does not appear grave, yet it has not healed. Even though it was so long since he cut himself. It will not heal. Hmm. Then let us see what these stars have to say. Be there any grave illness troubling Mr. John Delamere? Who thinks you mean Lord Henry Dyer, Dr. Foreman? I beseech your pardon, my lady. What illness troubles Lord Henry Dyer? Yes, he's gonna die. Ah, uh, that could happen, yeah, diabetic. He's not. Eh, he could be bewitched. Uh oh. Uh, uh. I mean, that would make sense in why his hand hasn't been healed. He can't be bewitched. It could be diabetic. Uh, we'll go with this one. Yeah, we'll go with that one. They calm your fears, my lady. Nothing is the matter with your husband besides the wound on his lordship's hand. He has no grave afflictions, then. You predict no illness that could provoke his death. Nay, my lady. For the treatment of his hand, Lord Dyer might consider seeing his barber surgeon and having him apply leeches to the wound, which will draw out corrupted blood and hasten the healing. Now, when it is to receive such reassurance from you, Dr. Foreman, I shall at once to home go and beseech Lord Dyer to call upon his barber surgeon. I'll give you good day. I'm pretty sure it was the diabetic, but. Ah, uh, yep, yeah, it was the diabetic. Oh, look! 
must have fallen still and I else would she have come here mayhap she's gravely ill Avis is back Good day Mistress Allen I hear a child was lately born to you I trust he is well Yes indeed God has favoured us with a healthy boy He is a true blessing to Mr. Allen and me <coughs> and we pray he remains so. That is, that this child remains in good health. And as I do aim of something, normally I would not have come, but he thinks it is best I am treated uh, for the sake of Marmaduke, lest he take ill from me. <coughs> I see. Then pray describe your troubles to me, Ave, Mistress Anne. Well, in, in truth, it is but a cough, but... Indeed, at first I thought it was not but a chilly cold, but it is many weeks now, and it lingers still. <coughs> Forsooth, I am afraid it does grow worse. Many weeks, you say? Why, that is most concerning. Let us see what the stars have to say. What ails Mistress Avis Allen, and how may she be cured? There is no cure. She is going to die. Uh, could be that. Oh, come on. Before I complete my judgment, madam, I must ask a question of uh, medical relevance. Who is the true father of your... God, mend me, Simon! You would plague me with your suspicious fancies even now, in my very hour of need. Have you no thought for my son and my... <coughs> I am full sick of your jealous delusions. Oh, verily, I should never have come. I will bid ye good day now, Simon. But would you not wish to know what ails you? I indeed, I would. Which is why I will be finding myself another doctor. Jesus Christ. He just had to say something. Oh well, we're just done. When the story's in folds, brought your back, let on folds. When the story's in folds, brought your back, let on folds. When the story's in folds, brought your back, let on folds. When the story's in folds, brought your Good taste in your Ferraro. How may I do you service? Hmm. How may you do me service, huh? This is a question, is it not? I do hear you offer many different services, huh? Not just in medicine. Oh, no. You are a dottore of a special kind. One who gives answers to all the problems, see? Forsooth, tis true, senor. In my practice, I endeavor to treat the whole man. Mind, body, soul. The location of his missing household items. All are connected at a holistic level. I take it this time you are come about a problem that does not pertain to a bodily complaint? See, si, these are my mama. She does a worry night and day. She say, Ricardo, you must go to the wise man who reads the stars and have him tell you what your future holds. I say, Mama, if it'll make you happy, I will go to Signor Foreman and ask him. I see. Si. And is there any particular reason for your mother to be thus concerned? Be you faced with some kind of imminent danger? A particular reason, you say? Nay, nee, signor, she needs no reason to worry. Mia madre is an Italian mama. Ah, yes, of course. You see now, eh? she is not like these London mamas who make the children live in a cupboard. <laughs> well, then, mayhap the stars might offer your devoted mother some comfort. What does the future hold for Ricardo Ferraro and his mother? All right, let's see. Not being honest and seeing these deceptions may be discovered. Oh. But then go with some transformation. Turn to your holds of his responsibility at a leading institution. Young man who is in a relationship with Singer Fernando's mother, Zachary, who will betray her. We're all one day inheriting a criminal son from his mother. This forbid this includes managing him. Wait, what? Let's check for managing him. Uh, I'll go with this one. 
of a most disturbing nature. Oh, very? Why? When you first came to me, you did tell me that you worked in trade. And yet my chart very plainly indicates that you are an authority figure, connected with a learned institution over which you hold a position of responsibility. Indeed, it would seem that you are not who you say you are. Do you deny it, Signor? Oh, Silla! You would accuse me of calling myself something I am not? <laughs> Look at you, Cyril, a charlatan who would call himself a doctor. You are naught but a pretender. Aye, sir, it is you who are the pretender. For it is clear you are not the merchant of Venice you pretend to be. Who are you? What is your true name, sir? You will know it in time, Cyril, for we shall meet again. I bid you good day, Dr. Foreman. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I was right. <laughs> Even though that... Oh, never mind. Oh, I should have just got... Oh, yeah. Man, that was gone. So it was with much John that I write to inform you of the death of my dear wife, Avis. These two days passed. Her doctor could not save her, even though she he had held the medical license was thus highly skilled. Though you are no longer my wife's doctor, I'm grateful for your kindness you have shown Avis over the years. I know she was too, indeed. She spoke of you in her final words, saying, Oh, Simon, forgive me, Simon, or something of the like. Doubtless, this expression of guilt was in reference to a bill for your services that she had not yet settled. How like my poor wife to have never been thinking of her obligations to others until her very last breath. And close with this missive the sum of one shilling and beg your forgiveness for late payment. Your most assured friend, William Allen. Now she's just feeling regret for not listening. Oh. Why did you not let me save you, Avis? Why did you entrust your precious life to another doctor? An ignorant impostor who knows not how to read the stars to judge an illness. Oh, my beloved Avis. Why did you die before I had the chance to... <laughs> Cause this tragedy will be ingressed in the care of some of here towards Avis. Father's punishment will not have any more problems in the right department. Yes. Why is the members calculating about Avis concerning her Catholic faith? Can they help you not for a provoked and she's saying she shouldn't? No. Avis lavished such a sin and carried on her tragedy and acted her own help. No. Just with the fall of the list of doctor medical degree. Senior doctor led to death. I could go with that one. Yeah, we'll go with that one. And tis that I thought. My Avis was a victim of London's corrupt medical establishment. A bright star brought down by a so called doctor who hides his lack of skill behind a, a mere piece of parchment with the words medical license writ upon it. A qualification granted him by men of the College of Physicians with whom he doubtless went to school. Fie upon the lot of them! May God punish that band of quacksalvers for the suffering they have wrought, and if not God, then why? I shall avenge you, Avis. Mark me, my dearest. Lord. I shall make those doctors 
pay for their crimes. Yeah, I don't know why we have a letter of recognition, but all right, I'm going to end this one here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oops, wrong thing. Bye-bye.